الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى كل من اتبع بإحسان إلى يوم الدين اللهم أرني الحق حقا وارزقني اتباعه وأرني الباطل باطلا وارزقني اجتنابه ربي يسر ولا تؤسر وتمن الخير يا رحم الرحيم ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم ربنا زدنا علما ربنا زدنا علما ربنا زدنا علما على دروس شريف بلنا الحمد لله my brothers my dear respected elders my beloved sisters and mothers الحمد لله by the grace of Allah سبحانه وتعالى by the efforts of every single person in the community الحمد لله today we see the fruits of the community people as we were talking people are living in in scarce area not close to the masjid and you know subhanallah everybody has traveled so far to live in this area of stove alhamdulillah by the efforts of everybody Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us an opportunity to have a masjid in a musalla in the musalla alhamdulillah we conducted tarawi for Ramadan subhanallah the Quran al Karim is the greatest blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestowed upon the human race we must understand and we must understand one thing about tafsir tafsir is such a thing because you're quoting the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala one thing is we interpret anything that this is to my knowledge this is this this is that but when it comes to the boundaries of interpreting the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we have to be careful why because this is the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the creator almighty Allah so tafsir, a lot of people, they're very enthusiastic about learning the zeal. The, the zeal for knowledge is a lot. But we must understand any word that we utter under the, under the category of tafsir. It is such a great thing that, let me tell you, in a hadith of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what does he say? It's in Tirmizi Sharif, man qala, man qala, about al-Qur'an, bi ra'yihi. A person, he interprets the Qur'an with his opinion. بِرَأْيِهِ أَوْ مِمَّا لَا يَعْلَمْ He does not have a knowledge, but he just interprets and he says, I think this, I think that, I think this. You know, subhanAllah, there's categories of people today that live. That, Alhamdulillah, people are enthusiastic towards deen. Alhamdulillah. But what happens? Shaitan misleads people in different ways. When it comes to the great good people, he leads, he, he takes them to the wrong path through good. The evil people, they're already doing evil. But the good people, if you tell a person who's performing salah, don't perform salah, you think he's going to perform salah? So shaitan comes in a different way. Mm-hmm. What does he say? This salah, alhamdulillah, you're performing salah. Today you're tired. Why don't you just stay home for today? So it begins like that. And then it becomes a habit. After that habit, then you know, it's okay, you'll make it up later. Slowly. So through good, he deceives that person. So he says, Man qala, about Al-Qur'an bi-ra'yihi that a person he starts interpreting Qur'an on the basis of not knowledge on the basis of his own opinion and I'll tell you this there exists this kind of people today and he says mimma la ya'lam and a person who has no knowledge he's just a normal person he says فَلْيَتَبَوَّ مَقْعَدُهُ مِنَ النَّارِ that this person his abode will be where? The torments of the hellfire. So we must understand tafsir, alhamdulillah, it's a great blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this Quran al kareem it's a great thing in our religion, alhamdulillah, Allah has blessed us with a lot of things. But we must understand when we pick up the Quran and we understand, you know, just inshallah, we will, as the weeks go progress onwards, we will understand the Arabic language. In the 15 Jews, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Kahf, He talks about the word raqim. A normal person, a normal Arab person, won't, you ask any person that is Arabic and you ask him what does Raqim mean, he won't know the answer. Why? In order to understand the language of Quran, we must understand the language of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa of that zamana. Today a person thinks if he knows Arabic, because through, if we know everybody, if we go to the village, they speak the proper Urdu. The village, they speak the proper Urdu. That's why at the time of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa what was their 
they, what their habit was that whenever the children were born in the city, they used to send the children for two years. That's why Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was uh, fed, milk fed by, not his mother, Dai? Halima. 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 Right? May Allah be pleased with her. Why? Because to preserve the articulation, to preserve uh, the firmness, to preserve the physique of the language. So we cannot just understand if a person learns a little bit of Arabic, open up the Quran. Now the word Raqim. Now in Arabic, there's 200 different words for town. How many words? 200. 200. So Alhamdulillah, we must understand this tafsir when people you know, pick up the Quran. And as we see the hadith of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in Tirmizi Sharif, that tafsir is something that we have to be very critical and crucial. And it's very thin lines. You're playing with the words of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. So that is number one thing. Number two, there's a hadith of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to make us understand what does it mean by Iman. Anybody who wishes to lean because of that, go ahead. So what it is, is it says, جَاءَتِ الْمَلَائِكَةُ إِلَى النَّبِي صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمُ The angels, they came to Nabi صلى الله عليه وسلم. So, وَقَالَ بَعْدُهُمْ Some of them said that, إِنَّهُ نَائِمْ He's sleeping. And then the other angels said, وَقَالَ بَعْدُهُمْ إِنَّ الْعَيْنَ نَائِمَ وَالْقَلْبُ يَقْذَانِ that the eyes of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam are closed, but his heart is awake. That's why when we come out of the bathroom, one of the reasons, what is the dua? Ghufranak alhamdulillahi ladhi, ghufranak. Oh Allah, I seek protection and I seek refuge. Ghufranak, I ask for forgiveness. Why? Because the heart of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was always in dhikr. As we learn from this hadith. Innahu na'ima wal qalbu yaghdan. This is the hadith of Bukhari Sharif. He says his heart was always awake at all times. Then they said, so then some of the angels, they said that there is an example for this companion of yours. So the other angel said, so set forth the example. What is that example? But then they said that his example, he'll give a parable. Now understand this example, subhanAllah, what it means to be a Muslim. As we're speaking about tafsir and Quran, what it means to recite the Quran, and we spoke about the benefits in Juma, that a person who reads one harf, alif, he gets ten benefits. In the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, any person that does good deeds on the day of Qiyamah will be multiplied ten times. Then in another verse of the Quran, Allah is so merciful, Allah says, Wallahu yuda'ifu liman yasha. That for over who he wills, he will give as much as he wants. So, this example is. He says, a person, a person, he builds a house. He builds a house. Then, وَجَعَلَ فِيهَا مَأْدُوبَ Ma'duba, the word Ma'duba means a banquet, dawat. Then he prepares for a dawat. وَبَعَثَ دَعِيًا Then he sends an inviter. He goes and he invites the people. He calls the people. Then what happens? Then, then in the hadith, there's two categories of people. What is the first category? فَمَنْ أَجَابَ الدَّاعِي دَخَلَ الدَّارِ وَأَكَلَ مِنَ الْمَعْدُوبَ Is that the first category? They accept the invitation. Then they come to the house, and they eat comfortably to their full. The second one, وَمَنْ لَمْ يَجِبَ الدَّاعِ وَمَنْ لَمْ يَجِبَ الدَّاعِ لَمْ يَدْخُلِ الدَّارِ وَلَمْ يَأْكُلْ Second people, they do not come to the house. They do not accept the invitation. And they do not eat. Then, so then the angel said, <coughs> the other angel, because Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is sleeping, so they said it again. They said, Inna hunaima, you're speaking about this parable, you're comparing a person, an invitation, a prayer people accept, people don't accept, he's sleeping. Again, the other angels, they said, what did they say? That, Wal-ayn na'ima wal-qalbu yaghdan, that his eyes are closed, but his heart is open. So whatever you say, he's always accepted. This was the miracle of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Not us today, we sleep, we don't even know. Forget, we don't even know sometimes when we're awake. You know? And then we're running for work. Because we have to say, Alhamdulillah, we're blessed with uh, alarm clocks. You know? So he says, then he says, okay, then just interpret the parable. What does he say? He says that, Adar al Jannah. That the house that I'm speaking about is I'm speaking about paradise. 
And he says, Adai, the person that is inviting is Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He says, Why did Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam come? Then he says, Wa faqad ata'ahu, that whoever followed Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he will get jannah. Meaning, whoever came to the invitation of Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam, when Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam came and he accepted Islam, then he will get jannah. Wa man asa. That whoever did not for money, who did not accept Nabi Sallallahu invitation, who did not come to the house to eat, meaning who did not accept Islam, <coughs> then that person will get Jahannam. So this is the basis of Iman. Then he says, Wa Muhammadun farraqa bayna nas Through this message, through this Quran, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam separated the good from the evil, and Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam separated the believers from disbelievers. So number one, we must understand that this tafsir and this Quran has guided all of us. And through the blessings of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we have been guided and we get the opportunity through the mercy of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala we sit here and listen to tafsir. Alhamdulillah. And then, uh, before we start the tafsir of the Quran, meaning when, before we do the commentary on the ayahs, there's few things we must understand and inshallah we'll speak about. Number, we need to speak about wahi, the revelation. There was different forms in which the revelation came to Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We just think that Angel Jibra'il came and he revealed, he recited, and Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam understood. No, no, there's six different kinds. Some say five, some say six, and some say seven. So we will speak about that in detail. But before we speak about Quran, and then we'll speak about the Madni Surahs, the Makki Surahs, why are they classified that way? We'll speak about the Ayahs, we'll speak about the chapters, why are the different chapters, inshallah, coming forth. It's a good topic. Tafsir is a very enjoyable topic if you get into this. And subhanAllah, you learn so much. But we must understand that anything that we learn, we should try our utmost to right away start practicing from that time onwards. Sure. Don't wait. Because life is too short. We don't know when we're going to pass away. So, we must understand that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created many creations. Right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created many creations. If we were to categorize the creation into two, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created that creation wa makhluqat jo Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala called it ashraful makhluqat the best of creation why Allah made him made them mukallaf mukallaf of ahkam Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made them responsible for their actions and what is that race that race and that creation is the human race and the jinn kind so out of the creations of Allah, if we categorize, the first category belongs to the human race and the jinn race. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the whole universe, whatever is in it, for the benefit of the first creation, the humankind. So in one category is the human race and the jinn race, and everything else Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created for the benefit of this first creation, the humankind. And then the purpose of creating the humankind, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, is for your test. The test of this life. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was, if you look at it in aqal, a lot of people, they have this questioning. Why did we need to come for this test? And then they say, Adam alayhi salatu wasalam, you know, he ate from the forbidden tree. But if we look at it intellectuality, intellectually, nobody in a human, you know, everybody wants the best for himself. Everybody wants to drive the best cars, the best house, and if somebody else has better, he wants to get better than him. And this is reality. This is the human ego. We all accept this. So, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was to give all of us Jannah, there will be no fun because everybody's on the same level. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to give us the different darajat, the different levels, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent us to this world. Through this test, different people, according to how much good they do, and they, in accordance to how much they follow this deen, they will get those levels in gender. This is through intellectuality. This is no hadith needed. So then, now, we come to the, again, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the human kind, the jinn kind, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the second category of things for the human race. So Allah, He creates His creation. One creation is the human race, the jinn kind. The second is everything that can benefit these two uh, kinds. Now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَسَخَّرَ لَكُمُ الشَّمْسِ If we see that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the sun, then it says, وَلَأَنْعَامَ خَلَقَهَا لَكُمْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the animal for you. And in another place, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَالْخَيْلِ وَالْبِغَالِ وَالْحَمِيرِ لِتَرْكَبُوا وَأَمِنْهَا That you ride these animals 
Today, Alhamdulillah, you know, we don't think about this. If we think about Nabi Sallallahu time, when the animals, they didn't have a car. You know, you just turn on the car and there you go, mashallah. Imagine traveling for miles and miles under the heat. And they used to travel under... So Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala created the rain, the sun, the moon. Why? So it can benefit the human race. Now, once the man, Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala put up in the world, and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created everything for the man. Now, we have a stick, or we have a rock, we have a wall, we have all these sort of creations. <coughs> now there was two things that the human must do. He must, now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after creating this creation, the humankind should understand how to use this thing. If a stick is there, he does not know how to use the stick, then there's no benefit. That's number one. Number two, he must understand after using the stick, is it getting me the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or is it getting me the wrath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? For this, for these two things, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave the humankind knowledge. Knowledge. In order to understand the creation, how to use it and benefit from it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave the humankind knowledge. If we don't have knowledge, we won't know how to use it. The stick is there. Through knowledge, people progressed and progressed and they turned sticks into eloquent houses, as we see today. They turned steel into these beautiful, magnificent cars with such beautiful functions that we cannot understand. Then, after getting knowledge, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created three resources by which a human race or the jinn race gets knowledge. Number one, hawase khamsa. He gets knowledge through his five senses. So he either he sees it through his eyes, he hears it, or he uh, tastes it with his mouth, or he feels it, or he smells it. Right? But, but it's limited. The first resource is limited. I touch something so I can understand that this is hard or soft. But I cannot tell you, how, you know, Forget the chair, but if any food. I won't understand by seeing it how it tastes. So each sense is limited in how much it can do. There's a boundary. <coughs> then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave the humankind a second resource. What was that resource? Aqal. So if I know how it tastes, but I don't know what is the, how I can use it through aqal, then he gave a mankind this brain by which he understands that yes, this is a color. This chair's color is brown. But now I understand the purpose of this chair, so I sit on it. It doesn't come through the five senses. It comes through your brain. And then what happened is, this person, he started living his life. This person, he started living his life that every day he goes to work, you know, and he sees these things. He sees a wall, he touches it, he feels it, he understands this is the wall, the purpose of this wall. And that's it. Then he continued on to live a life. <coughs> but, but then what happened is this man understood through his senses, this is a chair. He understood that I need to sit on it. This is the purpose of the chair. But then, that's it. Then the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him the third resource. And what was that resource? In order for a human being to understand how to, how by sitting on this chair, in what manner if I sit on this chair will be in accordance in accordance to which Allah is pleased with. In what way do I sit? It's displeasure to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In my dealings, I understand this is money. The color, how do I know this is money? I use my first five senses. I see it, I feel it, I touch it, right? And I understand this is money. Then my aql tells me the purpose of this money, you're supposed to do transactions. And that's it. My brain comes to an end after that. Then the man needed to understand, after he accepted that there is a creator, he needed to understand that how, by, uh, by how can I do my dealings by which I can get the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The brain doesn't tell you that. Does the brain tell you that? How can you get the pleasure? The brain doesn't tell you. The five senses doesn't tell you. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he sent he send Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam, and Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam, and he revealed wahi. Wahi, revelation. Now we must understand about revelation. That revelation came. Now, 
before I go on to understand, to understand what is wahi, let's recap everything. So Allah created the human race and the jinn race. He created many things. Then we categorize it into two, the human race and the jinn race. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created everything else to benefit these two races. Then we understood after getting these things as a man, as a human race, how can we, how do we use it? How do we use this? And the other thing was, how can we get the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? In order to understand this, Allah gave us knowledge. In knowledge, we have three resources. What was the three resources? Hawasi khamsa, the five senses. Where, where the five senses failed, the aql took in charge, reasoning. We call it reasoning. Now, in, and then when reason failed, if the man had to understand, when he understood there's a creator, how can I please my creator? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent wahi. That answers another question. A lot of times we have these questions that this doesn't make sense. Right? But we always have this question, well, no, no, this doesn't make sense. How is it in religion? Why is it like this? Why is it like this? So automatically we have this answer. What is the answer? What is the answer? Wahi. Quran. Where the five senses failed, the brain took over, reasoning. Where reasoning failed, wahi took over. <coughs> wahi explained that, listen, you have to put, Nabi Sallallahu says, you have to pay one fortieth of zakat, that's it. That's it. We have to do wudu this way. If you break your wudu, you have to wash this part. That's it. So why? Because the brain and reasoning cannot reach the level, the third level, which is wahi. Then it wouldn't be wahi. Then the greatest resource would be reasoning. And that is not what it is. An easy way to ex explain. Alhamdulillah, we all believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So for us to understand wahi is very easy. It's very easy. Because we say, Acha wahi, Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is our creator. He said it. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi we follow. And in the Quran it says that, Qulin kuntum tuhibbun Allah, fattabi'uni yuhibbukum Allah. If you want to become the beloved of Allah, then you follow me. And you become the beloved of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if you follow Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi you follow Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But what about a person who does not believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? What are you going to tell him? And then let me give you aqli dalil. Aqli aqli dalil. In what is aqli dalil? Through reasoning. If a person, for example, everybody speaks Urdu? Speak Urdu? Yeah. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll speak Torah about Urdu here. <coughs> so what happens is a person, Kisiko Volta, he says to somebody that, you know what, you go to that town, take this money, and that's it. So the person goes there. Now he, he has no way. No internet, no email, no text messaging like us today. He's back in the zamana when there was no such things. Just 10 years ago, mashallah, if you had a cell phone, you're the richest person in town. Today, even the kids at grade 3 have cell phones. I need to call my mom. You know? So, that person, he sends this person. And he does not tell him why he's sending him with the money. TK, so he goes, he takes the money. When he gets there, he doesn't know what to do. So he has tafriha, mashallah. Aram se ghumra, idhar, udhar, baag mein ja rahe. You know, and he comes to Toronto, he goes to Niagara Falls, mashallah, right? So then he just goes there. When he comes back, and this person says, did you do that deal? The first question the Aqal is going to say, this guy's mental. He's insane. He didn't even tell him what was the purpose of him going to the town. Same way, if this is an Aqal, if this is a brain that comes to the conclusion that this person is insane, he did not give him any directions, did not tell him why the purpose of him sending him to that town with this money was. And, and we just understood that brain is limited. It cannot answer the pleasure of Allah and displeasure of Allah. Then imagine Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sending us in this world and not telling us the purpose. Understand? So there is a reasoning behind Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sending us here. The re that is for a test. Our world is a test. A person who does good, in the akhirat he will get paradise. A person who does evil, in the akhirat he will get the torments of hellfire. And let me just touch upon the topic. Inshallah, next week we'll be talking about the different types of wahi. Wahi, the word wahi means, in, understand there is, a, there is, now when we look at meanings, right? One is just an Arabic translation. One is, they call it istilahi. Istilahi means 
How is it used in the laws of Islam? For example, wahi, take the word wahi. Wahi means ishara karna. Ishara, just to point towards something, maybe just to give a person a hint. Maybe through verbally, <coughs> say, you know, don't say anything. <coughs> well, for example, if you have a question, and brother, I forgot your name, sorry. Shiraz. Shiraz Bhai knows. So I tell Naim Bhai, he asked me a question, what is the answer? I said, so ishara se kam ho gaya. Wahi means to point towards something. But later on, it started, Wahi started meaning the revelation of Quran. Understand? Now, understand this. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the 27th chose, وَمَا يَنْتِقُوا أَنِ الْحَوَى إِنْ هُوَ إِلَّا وَحْيُ يُوحَى We think Wahi is only tafsir. No. Wahi has different kinds. There's matlu and ghair matlu. There's something new, right? Wahi has two different kinds. Why? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَمَا يَنْتِقُوا أَنِ الْحَوَى The Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he speaks, he does not speak his khwaishat, his desires. وَمَا يَنْتِقُوا وَمَا Wow means and, ma means negative, no. Yantiku to speak. Hawa means desire. So wama yantiku anil hawa an means about. So he does not speak anything that is about his desire. In huwa illa wahyu yuha. In huwa. Huwa comes for him. Going back to Nabi Sallallahu Wahyu yuha. Wahi. Wahi. Yuha that is revealed upon him. What does that mean? That means the hadith of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa is also wahi. The wahi of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa is also wahi. So when we quote a hadith, we need to be careful. careful. Understand? The Quran is saying this. So, uh, so one is that wahi which is known as Quran. Second wahi is known as hadith. And inshallah, in the coming week, we'll speak about the different types of wahi. And in a few weeks, inshallah, we'll start from Surah Juz'a Amma and Surah Nas, and we'll start on the tafsir. Waqawlu qawli hadha, wa astaghfirullah wa lakum as-salam muslimin, and kulli dhamid fa astaghfir, innahu wa khairakum. Subhanahu wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.